Hello everyone, um, I'm currently on holiday at the moment in Cyprus, uh, so sorry for the lack of videos and also the lack of comments as well. Uh, what I thought I'd do is cover the recent Evernote pricing changes, uh, but essentially I'm fairly happy at what Evernote is doing with the pricing. Um, obviously they're a very large business, uh, they're looking for to really adopt and move forward with all of their new uh, work. So I think they're getting ready for things that are bigger soon. So this is a, a positive thing. So I'll include all the information in the description, but here's the video uh, for the rest of the pricing information. Thanks very much guys, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers. So here we have the Evernote pricing system. At the moment, they only have three options. So one is basic, second is plus, and final is premium. A lot of people go for the basic option, which is the free option, and with the basic option, you get 60 megabytes of new uploads per month. So they've actually cut down the amount of devices you can use to two, which is a bit of a shame. Um, the web is not included in that. So you can access Evernote Web, which is the online portal. And that actually doesn't count as a device. So you can actually have you know, your Android phone logged in, uh, your app iPad logged in, and also use the web version on the computer. So you could actually access it through that. So on that basic version, you actually get the clipping, the web pages and images. So that's the Evernote Web Clipper. You get to organize, obviously, uh, all of the notes and notebooks as you would normally. Search for text inside images. That's something they've added in, in the last year in that basic package. They've also added to share and discuss notes as well so that you didn't previously be able to do that. You could only do that in premium. And you can now, across all of these, actually add a passcode lock to all of your notes or notebooks, which is quite good because it kind of adds that level of security. Um, for me, I mean, 60 megabytes of new uploads per month is a pretty decent amount. Um, I mean, I've never really gone above maybe 500 megabytes in a month, um, but I'm on premium at the moment, which is allowing me to do that. Um, but I would say 60 megabytes is, is quite a good amount if you're starting off. So plus in the middle is uh, one gigabyte of new uploads per month. And as I said, I'm, I've never really reached one gigabyte, I don't think, unless unless you're doing some really heavy sort of uh, editing or maybe even song uploading or, I don't know, it, let's say you're a student wanting to upload long audio files, then maybe that's uh, more beneficial. Um, so you can sync across all of your devices. There's no limit to how many devices you have. Uh, you can do all of the things in premium, uh, in basic, sorry. Uh, you can even access your notebooks offline. Let's say you don't have Wi-Fi on the plane. They're all available there. It allows you to view and edit, which is good. Um, so the one thing you can do here as well is you have un unlimited access to forwarding emails into Evernote. I believe that they capped this to about five per month in the basic version. Um, they might have recently completely ousted that. But that is a very good feature. So you get your own custom email address and you can now uh, forward anything into that email address, which then goes into uh, whatever notebooks you set it up to go into, which is great. So you can set that as an inbox one and sort of get mail through Evernote uh, or save relevant emails through that. They also have customer support via email, um, but as you can imagine, uh, just more easier to get in contact with people. And finally, the premium option, which allows you to upload 10 gigabytes of new uploads per month, which is beneficial if you're like really heavily dumping some big files in there. Um, we're talking like long audio files or anything MP4 based uh, would actually probably be your sort of solution. Um, premium would be your sort of solution for this. So you can do anything in the basic and plus versions. Um, you can also customer support via live chat, which is actually a bit of a savior sometimes because obviously, you know, you're probably going to get a day, half a day reply on the email, which is fine. But the live chat really does speed things up. If you're having any issues, mainly, I mean, the times I've used the live chat feature is whenever there's been a down, you know, outage of it on Evernote and I'm wondering when it's going to be back up next or even to try and get in touch with the Evernote team about how I want to specifically use a feature and they would reply back with an article or something relevant like that. The other benefits in premium is that you can search for text inside of the PDFs, which is very beneficial at Office Documents too. Uh, that's really nice because obviously imagine if you've been sent a massive research piece and you're trying to find that one word or, or mention of any people inside of an article or journal or whatever it is, 
um, and you want to find that fast, then that PDF search feature is very good. Same again in Office documents. Um, that's anything from docx to PDFs um, and even you know uh, everything in between. The other thing you can do is also annotate PDFs, which is a really beneficial feature. Uh, you can use you can use that on the Android and um, iPhone version. I really like that feature. Uh, it just adds a little bit of um, it, it makes it look more professional when you resend it back to people. So that's very nice too. Scan and digitize all business cards. Uh, that's very nice too. You can also, if you're a business customer, you can even attach your Salesforce account to it so that anything. Uh, when you yeah, let's say you're at an event, you scan tons in, and they're all leads. Then you can directly input them into Salesforce. It also connects up with LinkedIn. So every time you scan a business card, it auto uh, detects everything inside of that business card and matches it with the LinkedIn account that's relevant, which is really helpful. So a great option there for especially for professional individuals. Um, present notes in one click. Personally, I've never really used this feature, but it's something that I know a lot of people do, especially when they're very heavy, heavy Evernote users and very visual heavy Evernote users and have an iPad specifically that they can do drawings on using the Evernote, um, the Evernote writing feature or the drawing feature, and they can actually visually represent this on the screen to people. Um, so very more creative individuals that are using Evernote, that's a perfect tool. Browsing the history of your notes, again, this is something that is very useful in case you want to uh, go back to a previous revision or someone changes something and you don't like it or you know someone changes something you'd like it but you want to see what they previously said in the comments or whatever, then you can go back to that. Um, and also, obviously, they had that uh, two years ago, they had the conference where they announced Evernote Context where every time at the end of each note you would get uh, an AI, an AI-based uh context algorithm which would detect uh, certain articles or certain LinkedIn accounts. That's very useful. I found that quite handy sometimes when emailing in specifically forwarding an email into Evernote and then the context automatically brings up the people involved in that string of conversation in specific articles they've been in in the news and also LinkedIn accounts. Helps you kind of get that bit of edge. I'm not sure whether it's like one of those features where you're like I need to get premium because of that, but again, very handy. So as you can see here, this is translated into euros, um, but basic is free. You know, I think the only thing that you're going to struggle with is the two devices and maybe even um, the inability to annotate PDFs and, and, and search text inside of PDFs. But I mean, that's a compromise between those two. Um, I think plus is a good option. So plus is 29.99 euros which is about $34.99. Um, I think it's a good option for a year. Um, I like the ability to access notes uh, offline. I like the ability to forward emails. That's really all that it adds. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, the sync across all devices and one gigabyte really does open up the space for you. Uh, and it's really the medium between these two. But if you're a really, if you've started using Evernote for the last six months, you've been adding notes in hideously and you started wanting to really access all of the features, Maybe you're doing the month by month, then the premium option at $59.99 per year on euros is a good option. That's $69.99 in America. Um, and you can all, I think you still can go monthly. So monthly that works out at $7.99, $7.99 per month, which is up from $5.99 per month, which is interesting. So Evernote, as I said, have really developed this whole option. I think it's great. It means they're much more refined in their features. It means that they have the opportunity now to completely redesign the service. And I've said this for a while now, redesign the service and have a base rate pricing for everything that would really attract new customers. So they're really trying to build a strong business case around this. But as you can imagine, if you are a business user, uh, 20,000 companies are already using the Evernote business tool. The Evernote business is very much um, focused on groups of individuals using Evernote, but making it very, uh, very much like premium, but also like um, with your team and have all the team information there. So it's very uh, efficient for if you're a current user and you also want to use it in your team. So that's another option, but they're very custom prices uh, there. Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful in 
Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful in explaining the new Evernote pricing changes. Um, please do drop a link in the description. Um, please do drop a comment about whether you like the new Evernote pricing or don't like it. I'd really love to know your thoughts. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing some more videos about Evernote. Um, as you all know, um, I'm now an Evernote community leader. So if you have any comments specific to improving your Evernote experience or want me to do a video specifically about an Evernote feature or an Evernote um, service inside of Evernote, uh, anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get onto that. Thank you very much, everyone. Make sure to have a great week. Keep productive and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.